Reintegration of former extremists into society is not really a new concept in Africa. It's been tried in Somalia, the DRC, and Niger. And that's just a few examples. But in all of these countries, the common thread is it's not been successful. Why is the process failing? Thank you so much, Pelina. I think there are a couple of factors that will not make the DDR to be successful. And the number one thing is the fact that um, in, most of, in most of those places where you have mentioned, they are foreign imposed ideas that are probably not rooted in community buying, community factors, local factors uh, being factored into the development of those programs. That is the number one thing. The second thing is that who are the people who are the helm of affairs of operating or implementing those programs? Most of the times they are military centric. Whereas when you want to do reintegration, it has to be an holistic approach where you bring in community people, religious people, government agencies, psychologists, sociologists, all kinds of professionals who we have one or two things to input into the implementation. And the number three thing is fund funding. DDR reintegration is a, is a cost, in, um, uh, it uh, attracts a lot of financial uh, implications, which most of the times government are really interested in putting the required funding to back it up. Right. And, and, and there's also the factor of the individual motivations and circumstances of those who get involved in extremism. Uh, it is also an issue which needs to inform integration initiatives. Are there mechanisms that exist in the continent to individually assess these former fighters to just determine their motivation for recruitment, recruitment and how best to reintegrate them into society? Yes, indeed, at the continental level, as far back as 1992, when the African Union was still OHU, there is a counter-terrorism strategy which span up until present, uh, present date, yeah, and it has been reviewed over time. At the regional level, ECOWAS also has its own framework, the strategy, which it is in, uh, expected that nations will factor in when they want to develop their counter-terrorism program. I also believe the same is applicable in East Africa or, or, or even in South Africa where we're having the issue in Cabo de Gado now. But like I said, what is very, very important is that uh, it must not, it has to be locally built, it has to be locally generated, and then the, the people need to input into the development of the program. And the number one thing that is now on the front burner now is the issue of transitional justice. You can't just integrate people who have committed a violent crime against the people into the community without first going ahead to, I mean, to prepare the people that are actually going to receive them in the community. And I think broad-based now, that is the reason why most nations that are troubled by terrorism are now looking in the direction of transitional justice, which um, helps the people to be able to receive them. And probably for the people who have committed a crime as well to be able to serve some, I mean, some form of uh, punishment so that it doesn't look like uh, probably you think uh, you can just go scot-free having committed such violent crime against the people. So a sense of perhaps justice being done, that is what the community wants yes, to see. Yes, 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 that is what the transitional justice is all about. Yeah, and, and also, Wale, there is also sometimes the incentives that are given to these former fighters just to make them lay down their weapons and come back to the society. And sometimes these incentives have been seen by community members as rewards to the former fighters. So the question is, how should community perceptions that economic incentives are unfair be addressed? Because they are given by governments in Africa. I think uh, uh, largely it has come to be an apartheid of the process because uh, people have, uh, some people are now seeing it as a means to assess um, um, some form of uh, financial gain from the state. And I'll give you an instance like the issues of Niger Delta militancy in Nigeria, where about, uh, I think around uh, between 20, 2007 and 2010, there's a deradicalization program which helped people to lay down their hands. Huh? And then they were rewarded with scholarships abroad and some people, were with, I mean, with some cash, with some huge amount of money. So what you have seen over time is that we have come to experience a, a second wave, third wave of uh, militancy. People also see it as an opportunity to have access to state resources. So I think that is the area that uh, the state have to be very, very careful so that people don't begin to see de-radicalization and reintegration as an opportunity to um, gain some form of, um, uh, I mean, to assess some financial gain from the states.